With the release of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl being only two and a half months away, it's hype season for the new Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Remix. The Pokemon Company is trying to promise a faithful recreation of the original games by making it resemble as close as to the original game as possible. That being said, there are some features which we know are different from the original games as well as some unannounced features that may not return. These are the changes to the Pokemon Diamond and Shiny Pearl remakes. The Game Corner The Game Corner is a feature that has been introduced since Pokemon Red and Blue and basically involves using slot machines in order to win coins through chance which are then used to buy TMs and Pokemon. However, when Diamond and Pearl was released in Korea, this feature was removed due to having references to gambling. In Pokemon Platinum, this feature was also removed on the European copies due to changes in the Peggy classification. This would have forced the game to be classified from Peggy 7 to Peggy 12. This is unfavorable because Pokemon is geared and tailored towards a younger audience. This effectively reduces the ability from Game Freak to market the game towards children. And so therefore, they had to remove this feature in the European versions of the game. Since then, the Game Corner has not featured in any of the future games, with the exception of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which replaced the Game Corner's typical slot machine with a puzzle game mode called a Voltal Flip. However, these were not the last references to the Game Corner within the Pokemon games. In Pokemon Let's Go, the Game Corner existed due to it being on theme with the Team Rocket Hideout and was a very key element of the story. However, these were arcade machines instead of slot machines which were not playable to the character. Similarly, in Pokemon Alphire Sapphire and Omega Ruby, the Game Corner was actually a closed shop front in Morville City, rather than adding an actual fun game mode such as the beloved Voltorb Flip. So if the games are faithful remakes, that means that the Game Corner is going to be added into Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, right? Well, no. You see, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is expected to be released with the Peggy 7 rating in Europe, and we know this due to the European reveal of the box art. Given the recent history with media classification bodies in relation to gambling references, we can be assured that the game will not have a rating that's 7 if the slot machine mechanics were to continue. Therefore, Game Freak will have to exclude these as part of the remix. However, what is not clear is whether they're going to be adding alternative references, such as Heart Gold and Soul Silver's references to Voltorb Flip, which replaced the original Game Corner. Customizable character outfits. In the original Diamond and Pearl games, the player had the option of two protagonists, a female and the other being male. These characters were not customizable in any sense, and their sprites were fixed. It is confirmed in the second trailer of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that the player can customize their outfits in many different ways. This was a trend that became a staple of the franchise since Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. It is rumored and speculated within the community that these customizable outfits were purchased in a new shop which resonates where the original game corner once was. Pokemon follow you in the overworld. This concept of Pokemon following you in the overworld dated back to 1998 with Pokemon Yellow. Your startup, Pikachu, would follow behind you for your entire journey. This concept has become a fan favorite of the franchise, and since then, every now and then, a franchise game would include this feature. And Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is no exception. What is not clear is how that mechanic is incorporated within the game. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the first Pokemon in your party travels with you in the overworld. This is in contrast to Pokemon Let's Go. In Let's Go, the Pokemon which follows the trainer is determined by you, the trainer. And bringing out certain Pokemon allowed the trainer to ride these Pokemon for faster travel or to be even airborne while traveling. Personally, I would much prefer that the Pokemon be chosen by the player. The main reason for this is that I'd much prefer having a choice of Pokemon to have follow me or not. In Let's Go, you can actually turn this feature off if you feel like it's annoying. And honestly, choice is king. Pokemon Hideaways. This is a brand new feature which was introduced and shown to us in the August 2021 Pokemon Presents. 
These are dungeon-like areas of the underground, which can allow the Pokemon trainer to obtain new wild Pokemon. These Pokemon differ based on statues which are currently present in the player's underground secret base. This is an extension to the underground mechanics and were not originally present in the original games. The Pokemon Company has confirmed that there are some Pokemon which can be only obtained within these hideaways. What was worth mentioning is that in the trailer, there were Houndor found in a magma-like environment despite them not being present in the original Diamond and Pearl Pokédex. However, they were part of the Platinum decks. And so therefore, this is likely a mechanic that will allow you to get Platinum Dex Pokemon. Another feature which I don't expect them to include in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is the Battle Frontier. The Battle Frontier is a post-game feature where the player enters various facilities which have unique rules or challenges and the player needs to beat these challenges consecutively to earn battle points. These battle points are then used to buy useful TMs, held items, and secret base items. If the player were to get a win streak going, they would have a chance to face off a Frontier Brain, who is a very difficult trainer for that specific challenge. Should the player complete this challenge, they would receive a commemorable print for their hard-earned efforts. Now, in relation to whether or not this facility will be in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, it is unlikely. You only have to look at Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, which excluded the Battle Frontier, despite being present in Pokemon Emerald, but not Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire themselves. Game Freak claimed at the time that only a small amount of players appreciated this feature, and so they've decided entirely to scrap it. As someone who actually enjoyed the Gold Symbols challenge in Pokemon Emerald, I was devastated and still frustrated with Game Freak's decision to date. However, I do not see them changing from their stance, and therefore, I would not expect them to include a Battle Frontier in the new remakes. And that's the end of today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like the content, please press like and subscribe. It goes a long way to help me making this content, and I'll see you all next time.